<laughs> you know, and if they put school, naturally there'd be no school. And I you know. know. Well, you're from Canada. You got that stick in the I snow. Have absolutely no idea what oh, it's like. Right. Right. Okay, let's, let's, let's get started. Uh, in the serious. previous session that we had, I taught you how to do what? How to find prospects, right? That's right. And uh, in finding those prospects, we learned how to use the what? The phone. The phone, right? And uh, I gave you a five-step track, remember? Mm -hmm. I gave you a five-step track. Identify, introduce, ask, give them a reason why you're calling, and then ask again in a different way. That was the track, the five-step track to use when, uh, when you find a prospect. And at the end of the session, I touched on a little bit about how to, to convert that prospect into an appointment, but we're going to delve in even deeper today on how to convert those prospects into appointments, okay? Now, um, finding the prospects. Uh, those of you who actually got on the phone based on the information that you learned last week, you got over the fear of the phone and you became tough. You became tough and, um, and you made the calls and you got better at, and you got over the fear of the phone and you started to make the phone your friend. Um, Who told you that? Well, <laughs> actually, you did, Mark. You you came in, right? And you said the, oh, I did. you made one call. You made one call, and the first call you got a listing lead, right? Isn't that true? And not a listing lead, uh, oh. a, a buying lead. A buyer lead. Yeah. You know? Isn't that neat? That's Very neat. Yeah. <laughs> she came in. She was excited, and she said, hey, "That's about guess all what? I did." But it worked, right? Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, um, so you got rid of your fear of the phone, um, and, and you made the call. So it reminds me of uh, this story, you know, about being tough, about this little guy who walks into a lumber camp, and he says to the boss, he said, uh, listen, I want a job. And the, and the boss looked at him and said, you're, you're, you're not tough enough to work in this lumber camp. He said, oh, yeah, I'll have you know, my last job, I tore my arm off and I sewed it back on myself. And the boss said, well, I guess you are pretty tough. He goes, yeah. He goes, well, I'll tell you what, you got a job. What do you think of that? And he says, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> he was tough, but he didn't have the skill that it took. And that reminds me of a lot of real estate agents sometimes when they make the effort and they, and they get over the fear on the phone and they get tough and they get on that phone, but then they lack the skill of actually converting those uh, those calls into appointments. You follow me? There's nothing more frustrating than making a hundred calls and not even getting one appointment, right? Um, so that in addition to being tough enough to make the calls, you also have to be skilled enough to turn those calls into appointments, all right? So, um, <laughs> and I, I use that story because, you know, agents, have they've learned how to use the phone, but they haven't necessarily developed the skill to make the phone their friend. And a lot of that has to do with just practice, just getting on the phone and making those calls over and over again until you get better at it. Um, listen, the first time you did anything, you weren't always that great at it. Can, can you remember back the first time you tried to drive a, a bike, ride a bike, or mm -hmm. drive a car? Were you really good at it, right? Was it a little awkward? How about the first time you gave a listing presentation? Those of you who are more experienced, do you remember the first time you gave a listing presentation? a little awkward, right? So the first few times you do it, it's going to be a little awkward, but that's normal, okay? So uh, the first part is, of course, is to identify the prospect. The second part is to close for the appointment. And the way we close for the appointment is we actually have um, three different steps in order to get there. So, but before we get into the three steps, let's go over the, um, let's go over the questions, the top five questions. Uh, number five, what is the objective in telephone prospecting? A, to get the listing, to find prospects, or C, to make appointments? Make appointments. Yes, make appointments. You guys are good. Number four, most people who are thinking of uh, selling and buying another house always sell before they start looking. Don't laugh. Uh, fully understand the problem of owning two houses at once. Or C, think they should look around before they list. C, C is correct. If you want a prospective buy, uh, seller, excuse me, if you want a prospective seller to want you to come over, you must offer them a, a fair trade, 
worth their time and attention, B, your best deal, or C, two tickets to a concert? Two tickets to a concert. <laughs> All right, which concert is it? <laughs> and the answer is A, of course, a. yes. A fair trade worth their time and attention. Number two, you need to know two things about a seller to get an appointment. A, their address and phone number. <laughs> B, how long they have lived in their home and what they think it is worth. Or C, motivation for selling and what fair trade to offer. C. C is correct. What questions best determine a prospective seller's motivation on the phone? A, where are you thinking of moving to? B, what type of home are you looking for? C, have you found it yet? Or D, all of the above? All of the above. Yes. Usually when D is an option, that's the answer. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next page. A and seller uh, phone when, when a seller called yesterday yes. when I was on the phone. And uh, so I asked all these questions. It was going quite well and talking about the spring market, which is going to be good and it's you know nearly to us and all that. She said, yes, sir, this spring would be very good. But she said, not this spring. I'm thinking of next spring. <laughs> oh, I said, you are? She said, oh, yeah, because we want to, we're adding a garage, and we're doing this and that, so she wanted next spring. Wow. So I'm going to send her just a little card with my, my card in it. I got her name and address. Okay. Yeah. Well, so. it's a, a lead that you can incubate and, uh, you know, in when, one year. Right. <laughs> I, with, when I hear people doing that, I wonder if they're making those improvements to increase the, uh, the value of their home. That's and sometimes, said, yeah. sometimes I wonder, you know, uh, like you should step in and tell them, yeah, yeah, you do. might need me now. <laughs> yeah. That would be a good time. Well, yeah, because I told her, she gave me the address and I know where it is. And I said, you know, don't overdo it. Oh, she says, I know, we're already overdoing it. But she said, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, we're in, in it now, so we have to finish. We started the garage and they but, started something yeah. else and said, we'll have to finish that. Yeah, because the cost of building a garage is always greater than the value of the garage when you're selling a house with or without a garage, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, if uh, an appraiser gives an additional $12,000 added value for a one-car garage, uh, but it might cost you $18,000 to build it, you know, so it's not always the best home. Yeah. yeah. So like you said, they're already into it, huh? Yeah. It's too bad. Okay. Well, let's go into the, uh, the three steps. Uh, the first step is to find out what their motivation is by asking these three, what kind of questions? Power. Power questions, not just any kind of question, a power question. Mm -hmm. Number one, where would you move if you sold? Number two, what type of home would you be looking for? And number three, why haven't you moved yet? <coughs> why haven't you moved yet? Now, um, just to kind of put it all together for you, remember the dialogues that I was that I was sharing with you uh, last week or two weeks ago when we went through the process, and I said, um, and I call up and I and, I, and it goes something like this: uh, ring, ring. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> hi, is this Mark? Yes, it is. Hi, Mark. My name is John Miller, and I'm with GMAC Real Estate. And uh, I was calling to see if you thought about selling your home either now or in the near future. Or maybe in the near future. Okay, great. Now, whether she says yes or no, I always go to the next step, which is the reason. The reason why I ask is I'm working with a young couple by the name of Dio Giovanni. They work at EMC Corporation. They have three kids, and they're kind of looking for a home in the, in the Feeding Hills area. And I knew that, um, and I, I kind of promised them that I would call everyone in the area to see if they were interested in selling their home. Um, is that a fictitious family? No, it, it is for the sake of this <laughs> presentation right now. 
But when you actually make the call, you better be careful with you, the same name. Well, you don't have to be careful. You just have to. <laughs> what if I mean? That's true. Hold on. Let me finish my sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Here's you find a real buyer with a real name, oh. and and then ask. All you have to do is simply say to the buyer. Uh, let's say if I met uh, Mr. and Mrs. Foley. And I said, would you folks, you're looking for a home in the Feeding Hills area of, uh, and they say, yeah. I said, would you mind if I made some phone calls in the neighborhood on your behalf to see if I could drum up some additional listings for you? What do you think they'd say? Yeah, but don't use my name. Why? Well, they don't want He gave us an alias. He called us Foley instead of Fiore. <laughs> yes. Right, right. Foley, right. <laughs> so, uh, but it, would you mind if I used your name? I could say that, you know. Um, here's the bottom line and why I'm really uh, encouraging on this and I'm not letting this go. Okay. is because the more detailed the reason is, the more believable it is. Yes. And I want to be honest and I want to be sincere. I don't want to give a fictitious name. I don't want to make up to pretend that I have a buyer when I really don't. I want to tell them the truth. So, uh, you know, and if they didn't want me to give their name, then I'd go to another buyer that I met at an open house and said, geez, I know you're looking for a home in this area. Uh, would you mind if I looked around and, you know, more importantly, are they ever ever going to know that I use their name? You know, yeah. I'm not giving out their social security numbers or anything like that, so it's not that personal. Um, but the more details you, I add to that, Congress. Remember, I told them, you know, they work at EMC Corp. They have three kids. They're looking for a four-bedroom home um, in this specific area. So, um, so anyway. Um, so that's, so if you notice, Mark said that, um, uh, she said, uh, yeah, she was kind of thinking about selling her home. And whether she says yes or, or no, if she said no, I'm not thinking about selling my home when I asked her here, I'm going to ask her again in a different way. And I'd say, so I was wondering, uh, let me ask you this, when do you plan on moving? See, now, <laughs> I've done this and I've had dozens of other people do this hundreds of times. And no one ever said, ever, ever in the history of the world, ever said, wait a minute, you just asked me that two questions ago. You ask them again in a different way, you get a completely different answer. Because instinctively, they want to say no when you ask them at this point. And then after you've given them the reason, the believable, detailed reason why you're calling them, now they trust you more, and now they feel more open. They'll say, well, yeah, I, could, I guess I might be interested in moving in six months or a year from now. Oh, okay, great. So now that you've got a yes response, now you move into the next step. Most agents get so excited they hang up the phone and forget what address they're going to and, and, and then they, they, you know, they think they have an appointment. So what you want to do is at this point, this is when you want to ask the three questions that I just gave you. What kind of questions are they? Power, Power questions. <laughs> Where would you move if you sold? That's what I would ask Martin. She would tell me. Uh, or it said I called the Fioris and they, they told me that. I want to go to Hawaii. Do you Hawaii. Do you sell something over there? <laughs> I can refer you to someone, absolutely, sure. Oh, okay. uh, what type of home would you be looking for? A ranch. A ranch? Okay, great. And, and just out of curiosity, Mark, why haven't you moved yet? Oh, because I'm just going through a divorce now, so it's a good time to do it. Okay, I understand, no problem. Um, so these, now you have this information, would you agree that this information is extremely powerful? I mean, that you yeah. know this information. The answers to these questions are extremely important to you. Does this put you at a, uh, uh, more of, a, of an advantage than other agents, knowing this information? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. In, in a major way. Um, so I promise I'd give you those three questions. Those are the questions. When you get when you get past the dialogue and you go through the um, and you go through the five steps and use the dialogues that I mentioned, then you can do that. Now, um, the second step is to <clears throat> find out what they need to see in your handout right here again. Fill in here. It says find out what they need to what. How many remember that game show concentration? I do. You do? Oh, yeah. All right. And remember they had the pictures? And yeah, you, you the, put them together. Right. Well, that's what I'm doing here. C. So let's see. Find out what they need to oh, look for. Words, they, one the other. So we'll look at Look at this oh, picture right Oh, I see. Right the here. one up here. Yes. Here, here. Right here. And C. What you need to... Uh, what's that thing? The C, on? it's a big eye. Yeah, but what is that thing uh, for? Get them to want you to come over. Here or C. 
That's okay. correct. Yeah. Find out what they uh, find out what they need to hear or see to get them to want to come over. And I know I've already done this for you, but if you wouldn't mind, underline the word want. Because there's a big difference. <laughs> there's a big difference because you don't want you want them to want you to come over. You don't want them to say, yeah, okay, come on over. So in order to do that, we're going to do what we call, uh, we're going to offer them what's called a fair trade. And I touched upon this on the last class, but we need to delve into it again. And, um, you know, sellers listen to that station, WIIFM. You know what that is? WIIFM, the radio station. Uh, I'll tell you a little funny true story about how I first learned about the radio station, WIIFM. Um, my first manager, his name was George Mazurby, he came into my office one day and we, there was about a room about, I don't know, probably about two-thirds the size of this room and there were four of us crammed into this closet of a room with four desks. And uh, he poked his head in one day and he had uh, a sticky note on his forehead and it had some letters on it. And he, and he looked in the door and he said, hey, John Miller, how you doing? And, and then he walked out of the room with this sticky note on his forehead. So, you know, obviously I, I'm a sucker for this. I, I stood up and I followed him out of the room and I'm saying, George, what is that on your forehead? What is that? What is that? He goes, oh, nothing. You don't need to know. You don't want to know. And he kept walking into his, so I, I follow him into his office, you know, because of course I want to know. And, uh, and I'm laughing and I'm smiling. I know he's just, you know, goofing around with me. And, I, and so he sits down at his desk, and I'm sitting on the other side of his desk, and I'm just looking at him and going, W-I-I-F-M. He had it on his, on his sticky note on his forehead. And he, and he looks at me and he says, so what's up? What, what's on your mind? I'm like, what's on your mind? What's W-I-I-F-M stand for? And uh, he said, oh, it's just a radio station that all buyers and sellers listen to on a consistent basis, and it's something that you should really know as a real estate agent. Uh, that is, of, of course, if you plan on being successful in real estate. Do you, John? And I said, well, yes. He said, okay, then. So, again, he's teasing me, right? And he's not telling me what this means. So, finally, I got out of him. It stands for W-I-I-F-M. stands for What's In It For Me. What's In It For Me. W-I-I-F-M. So, if you could keep that in your mind that people really don't care about anything else except themselves. <laughs> if you have a mindset, in, in a healthy way, understand that people really are first concerned with what's in it for me, not what's in it for you. We, we were talking uh, just yesterday at our sales meeting about working with buyers and uh, we didn't want to waste our time working with buyers, but we kind of turned it around and said to the buyer, you know, we, we talked about using some dialogues and saying to the buyer, listen, I want to get you pre-approved first before we go out and show you 20 houses and, and write up an offer and then only to find out that you, you're disappointed because it's not in your price range and therefore I don't want to waste your time. What's in it for the buyer? What's in it for the seller? So when you're trying to get this seller appointment, you have to think about what's in it for them. So what I did is I listed a, a list of fair trade items and I provided this to you last week as well. Um, and these are fair trade items. These are items that you would give them uh, a value that, and that have a value for them. And so, for instance, um, the dialogue might go like something like this. Why don't I stop by and take a look at your house? I don't mind. Uh, while I'm there, I can provide you with a competitive market analysis. Uh, that way, you'll be, you'll be able to know exactly how much your home will sell for. Um, would that be of value to you? Well, yeah, that would be good. Okay, now they want you to come over versus you just saying, okay, I'm available at 6 or would 7 be better? You follow me? See, there's a difference between being average and good and great in this business, and my goal is to share with you techniques to help you to be great. You know, when people want you to come over, there's a greater chance that you're going to be able to list the property for sale and to help them out, and they're going to remember you more as well than they would anyone else. Um, they may have another agent in mind that they use in the past. They may not even call that other person if they're that impressed with you. And it starts with the call. It starts with the first appointment. So the next step is to um, move forward with uh, fair trade analysis, uh, fair trade, um, uh, fair trade item. Now, um, I like number six too, estimate of net. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. 
Because sometimes they'll say, well, I don't need a comparative market analysis. My wife's an appraiser. I know exactly what my home is worth. Oh, okay, so that's not a value to them. So then I would move to a, another item, and I would say, well, why don't I do this? I don't mind. Why don't I come by, and I'll provide you with uh, an estimate of what you'll net in your pocket after the sale of the home. That way you'll know exactly how much money you'll have um, to buy your next home and or how much money you, you may need to pay off your mortgage and, and pay me at the same time. Would that be a value to you? Well, yeah, I guess I, that would be that would be good. Um, what about this? Why don't I stop by? I don't mind. Uh, take a look at your home. While I'm there, I can give you some ideas of some things you can do to improve the the, uh, the value of your home. Uh, since you did tell me you were going to make some improvements, I might be able to give you some suggestions of things that you can do that will help you net more money in your pocket and some things you should avoid to not overspend in order for you to get the most amount of money for your property and net the most amount of money at the end of the sale. Would that be a value to you? Sure, that'd be great. Okay, great. Uh, I'm available uh, at six, so would seven be better? You give them the alternative choice closing <coughs> technique. So, uh, if you would, I've given you a list of fair trade items. Um, where it says dialogue on the bottom, if you would write this down, please. Um, and there's a reason why I'm having you write certain things versus me having written things for you. Uh, I'd like to stop by and try not to change the words too much uh, because they work. These are psychologically sound, history proven techniques and words that have been used for years uh, and, um, and they work. So I, I'd like to stop by, comma, take a look at your house. What about if they get three phone calls from me and from Bill and Roberta, and they go like, ah, you people sound like a robot. That's exactly what the other girl said to me. It's, it's, it's never happened. Never happened. Ever, <laughs> ever happened, yeah. And if it did ever happen, you, you could just simply say, wow, well, now you know that, you know, we are a, a great company. You know, we, we certainly, you know, company. we're out there, we're out there proactively working to uh, list and sell properties. Uh, that at least you now know at least, you know, at least you know which company you should be working with anyway. Yeah. An active company versus some, a company that's just waiting for something to happen. You know that we're actively out there going and pursuing business, but uh, uh, where do we leave off? Take a look at your house. Take a look okay, at and while I'm there, I will give you a I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I will give you a punch in the nose. No, don't, don't make that down. Uh, any one of the fair trade items. So you could just leave that blank if you want, or fill in a fair trade item. Um, you know, analysis of repairs. I will give you an estimate of net. Period. <clears throat> Next sentence. That way, you will know blank. And it's going to be something different depending on what the fair trade item is. Okay? So, for instance, if I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, uh, I will give you a market analysis. That way you'll know exactly at what price your home should sell. Um, I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I will give you a, an estimate of net. That way you'll know exactly how much money you'll end up with in your pocket after the sale of the property. Um, I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I'd like to give you um, an analysis of repairs. That way you'll know exactly what you should be spending money on to get the most amount of money out of your home. Let's say it's an expired listing, a listing that was listed with another company and they didn't sell it and you called them up and you're going to make an appointment. I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house and while I'm there, I'd like to give you um, uh, some reasons why your home didn't sell. That way, you'll know exactly what you should be looking for in a real estate agent in a, in a real estate company in order to get your home sold next time you list it. Next sentence, can I stop by at six or would seven be better? 
So you give them an alternative choice as to when, um, when they're available. Ask them when they're available. And if they say yes to either one of those things, guess what you have? An appointment. An appointment, right. <laughs> and as we said in earlier sessions, and for those of you who are joining us new, uh, in, order to make, um, in order to make money in real estate, uh, you need to have um, contracts written. And those contracts are developed by bringing two people together. And those people are brought together by making an appointment. And appointments are put together by making contacts. Contacts are put together by making calls or face-to-face. -face. So if you want to make money in real estate, it's a very simple formula. Make contacts either by phone or in person. Contacts equal contracts. Contracts equal commission checks. That's the formula. You don't ever have to go to training ever again. I just told you everything you need to know. How's that? Right? <laughs> what about was that when you're with the market being bad? What about when you see the house and you've seen it before, you've showed it, and you go, I can't understand how come it doesn't sell because there's no improvement that they could do and it's on a nice street. The price seems to be fair. Yeah. You know, and you go like, I, what reason would you give them that they didn't sell? You'll have to go to the price. That's the only thing you can... Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, statistically in this market, when you are uh, trying to get a property sold and it expired and it was on the market for a, a length of time mm -hmm. and it didn't sell, uh, you absolutely positively have to list it at a minimum of 3 to 5% below what it was listed for before or just don't take the listing. Mm -hmm. It won't sell. Here's the bottom line, gang. There is no amount of marketing in the world that will sell an overpriced listing. Mine did. Yeah. But it didn't close. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> no, the lady actually, she put an offer on it. It was a little overpriced. Yeah. She put an offer on it and she was willing to take it. Yeah. But then the appraiser came, came in and they, they, they had to drop 15000 Right, exactly, yeah. So again, that's very rare, that's an exception. Yeah. Uh, listen, um, I tell people, I, I, this is a, a true story. I had a, um, there's a gentleman who listed a property for sale, right? Anything I tell you, there's always an exception. It, it just kind of cracks me up. I say something, people say, well, that's not true, John. You know, <laughs> I, I could say, hey, I, I didn't, uh, you know, if you want to sell a home, you need to price it right. And someone says, well, that's not true. I didn't price my home right, and it sold. You know, that happens. You know, these things happen, but that's a rare exception. Um, uh, true story is, you know, I, Houses, you know, you get leads from signs in the yard, right? But if I had a seminar, hey, if you want to sell a house, if you want to sell houses, just put a sign in the yard. Because that happened once. <laughs> if you want to sell a home fast, put a sign in the yard, right? Now, they certainly help, but this isn't going to get a home sold all the time, every time. Uh, it reminds me of the story of the gentleman who put the sign in the yard, and the realtor told the seller, listen, don't, uh, if anybody comes by, don't talk to them. Just give them my card and have them call me. Realtor's on his way back, puts a sign in on his way back to his office. His cell phone rings before he even gets to the, back to the office. And it's the homeowner. He said, listen, you're going to kill me. He said, what happened? What's the matter? He said, well, right after you left, somebody stopped by, saw the sign. I did talk to them. I did show them the house against what you had recommended. And they're still here right now and they want to buy it. And the realtor says, okay, I'm on my way. And turns around and comes back and sells the house. Now, is that the way you sell every house? Yeah. Right, that'd be nice, right? <laughs> so, so there are always exceptions, uh, certainly. Uh, but, you know, if, if you want to make money in real estate consistently, you have to follow the, the simple formula, the, the rules. Um, and so if a house expires and it's on the market, you have to make an, at least a 3 to 5% adjustment to get it sold. And even that might not be enough. Because if you do your market analysis and it shows that your market analysis is 10 or 20% less than what the property should be listed at, then you have to go to that price first, or don't take the listing. Uh, worse than having a listing, uh, worse than having no listing at all, is having a listing that isn't selling, right? <laughs> Those of you more experienced people are shaking your head like, yeah, I know what that's like. Okay, uh, the third step, propose a get together. And in, in the blank space there, I'm just writing the words get together. Propose a get together. And I know you've already written this down, but fill in the blank there. Can I stop by? I, I, wanna, I really want to focus on those two words, stop by. 
it doesn't imply that you're going to move in with them. You follow me? I just want to stop by. I love those <coughs> words. So try not to change that dialogue. Can I stop by at 6 or would 7 be better? Now, here's, here's the bottom line, gang. Here's what you have to do. In order to really make this work, you have to, um, you have to go back to your desk and you have to work through this process. You have to practice it, you have to drill, you have to rehearse it. You have to make it work for you. Uh, and the only way to make it work for you is to work, work it, work the system, work the dialogues, make the phone calls. There's one thing that training does, and that is it only makes you aware of what it is that you need to do. You don't walk out of here with the skill. <laughs> That's the disadvantage of training of workshops like this. You don't necessarily walk, walk out of the room with the skill fully blown and like, yeah, this is great. Mike Ferry offers a program. He's a, he's a national trainer, Mike Ferry. And the program is called Productivity School. And for four days, all you do is you practice, drill, and rehearse your scripts and dialogues. So remember we were talking yesterday about, you know, oh, geez, if I just knew the words, if I just knew the words. Well, you can go to a class. You might you'd have to get on a plane, go somewhere, stay at a hotel. And day and night, you will practice your scripts and dialogues, and you will walk out of there knowing everything you need to know and say in the real estate business. But it's an investment in time and money, you know, and I go back to what Benjamin Franklin said, if you take the coins from your purse and you invest them into your mind, your mind will put coins in your purse. So don't be afraid to make that investment in yourself. Um, you know, some of you have taken my advice and have gone online to uh, floydwickman.com and, um, purchased his 101 dialogues um, and uh, you know the dialogue dictionary it's a great product and if you listen to that over and over again but how many of you bought it and then listened to it for four days and practiced it for four days in a row right <laughs> so if you did that you you know what you need to know in order to be successful in real estate so um, you know, when you first start out, you might sound something like this, like when I first started with these dialogues. You might, you might sound up something like this. Um, the ring, ring. Oh. Um, hello. This is John. What? Yeah. <laughs> John who? Yeah, right. You know, that was me when I first got on the phone. I mean, you just, I just froze. I didn't know what to say. Even, I even had the words in front of me, and I lost my place in terms of where, where I should be reading and all that. Uh, but I still got through it. I got through the phone call, and it, and it worked. Um, I didn't get an appointment on that call, but it got, me th it got me to the next call anyway, and I got better and better as I go. Um, so um, part of um, having a workshop together is to have a little bit of, uh, of interaction. And so what we're going to do today is we have the perfect uh, number of people. Usually it's, uh, you have to do it in a, in a, a, in a number of eight people, uh, and you typically will form a circle. But rather than doing all that, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have uh, Linda say it to Bill, and then Bill say it to Andre, and we'll just <coughs> kind of go around the room. And all I want you to do is simply read the dialogue that I gave you. And so what, what happens in this method of interaction is that um, you're hearing it, if there are eight people in the room, you're hearing it seven times and you're saying it once. And by doing that, it's kind of like you've practiced it. You follow me? And it, it's kind of uh, ingrained in your brain a little more. So, um, what I'd like you to do is um, just use, um, start off by using the, uh, the three questions. So, uh, Linda, we'll use you as an, as an example with Bill. And so, Linda, what you do is you ask Bill the three questions. Where would you move if you sold? What type of home would you be looking for? And why haven't you moved yet? And we're going to go under the assumption that she's called Bill and Bill has, is a prospect. And now she's turning Bill as a prospect into an appointment. And then after you've read those uh, three questions to him, Linda, uh, then you just simply go to the dialogue that I asked you to write down which is I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I'd like to give you a, whatever it is that you chose to put in the blank and give them the reason why, and then can I stop by now, or it's or six, or would seven be better, okay? And, uh, and all you have to do is just simply read it. Now, the rules of role play is that, uh, I, I use Bill's example, Bill, uh, the rule is you have to respond positively, okay? And so uh, when Linda says, where would, you, where would you move if you, where would you move if you sold, uh, Bill's just going to say, give her a name of a town. 
Uh, so as part of role playing, we're not going to say things like, well, listen, you're not coming over unless you cut your commission. That's a different <laughs> seminar, okay? <laughs> That's not positive role playing, all right? All right, so uh, Linda, are you, are you good? Yeah. All right, great. Let's, let's get started. <clears throat> Where would you move? Do I have to call? <laughs> yeah, right. You have to do the ring ring, right? No, that's fine. Yeah. I have you to can just call? ask. No. Uh, you can just ask. It's fine. Where would you move if you sold? Well, I, I really like the community I'm in right now, so I think I'd probably just stay in the town I'm in. And what type of home would you be looking for? Well, probably something a little smaller, a little bit more manageable, you know, the home the kids are going to. I don't need all the space we have right now. Okay. Why haven't you moved those yet? My wife's a real pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we've been thinking about it, but we just uh, haven't gotten everything together yet. Well, I'd like to stop by, take a look at your house, and while I'm there, um, Give you some tips on making your house saleable. Did I forget something? That way. That way you will know what. <laughs> That's okay. Well, let me, let me help you with it. Like, what, what would the tips do for him? What would be the benefit of you giving him some tips? That would give it together. Six or seven be better. There you go. And you close him for the appointment, right? And so Bill says, what time is <coughs> good for you, Bill? Well, you know, <laughs> seven o'clock would be better because I'll have my grandkids over earlier and I'll have time to get rid of them. Great, awesome. Great job, Linda. <laughs> way to go. <laughs> but you see, now it's good to get to kind of get this out of the way now. Get dust off the cobwebs while we're in the class right now. <coughs> and uh, then, then to have to do this on the phone the first time because now uh, you have felt like you've already done this before. You've already practiced it. And so when you get on the phone, it's a lot easier to do it. Um, and now you're going to hear it six or seven more times, right. not in, in addition to you saying it. So it'll really walk, you'll walk out of this room feeling a little differently about it than you did when you first came in. Okay, so Bill is going to call Andre. Okay. So Andre, I'm just going to ask you a couple more questions. Uh, where would you move if you saw? I'm not sure yet. Uh, that's something around this community, around, around us. And what type of home would you be looking for? I'm looking for old houses, but restored. And, and if you don't mind me asking, why haven't you moved yet? Uh, my wife, she would like to move to Florida. Uh, and then finally she decided that she's going to stay here. So we, li we live in the older house, but we want something something different. Okay. All right. Well, it sounds good. What I'd like to do is stop by and take a look at your house. And while I'm there, I'd like to give you uh, some tips on advertising your home, and that way when you're ready to do something, you'll know uh, exactly how uh, you can best move forward. Uh, can I stop by around six, or would seven be better? Six would be okay. Okay, well then I'll see you at six o'clock on the uh, 23rd, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. All right, way to go. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Andre, who do you want to call? Mm -hmm. uh, you can call anyone in the room you want. Well, next lady. Okay. okay. Call <laughs> Hi, where would you like to move if you saw it? I think I would like to go to Pine Point area in Springfield. That's nice. So, now, what, what type of home uh, are you looking for? For an older home, but in good condition. Okay. Now, why haven't you moved yet? Oh, I, I don't know. I never thought of moving before. I was always satisfied in the house. Well, I never thought about it. Uh, how would you like... Uh, Hold on, I would like to stop by and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I will give you some ideas how much uh, you can, uh, I, will, I will give you the idea of the estimate of net, net uh, profits. That's why you know exactly how much you can put in your pocket and put as a deposit for the next house. Oh, so uh, you know how to do that, to do the net, yes? Absolutely, yes I do. Oh, that's very good, uh, yes. I thought I would have to go and get an accountant. Oh, no, we, we can do all those things. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's we can good. Do all those things all for right. you. <laughs> now, can I stop by uh, at 6 or 7 would be better for you? Uh, 7 o'clock, I think, would be good. I'll see you today then at 7 o'clock. Okay, all right, Great. thank you. 
See, so, yeah, you guys are doing great. You're staying on track because you have a dialogue in front of you. So, you had, you know, an average agent might get thrown off track or maybe get into a conversation about something completely different and forget to close for the appointment at the end and just have a friend. And here's where a lot of agents screw up really bad. And what's beautiful about practicing this right now is that most of the time when the agent has done a, a great job like Andre has just done, he, he found a prospect. He got, he got the prospect engaged. He asked all the right questions. And then what he does is he says, well, listen, why don't I send you my business card, and when you're ready, you can call me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then, so what ends up happening is we find a, a live one, and we lose them because we don't close for the appointment. And the prospect, the seller on the other line, is thinking, what the heck just happened? Like, I don't understand. And they end up living there for another year, even though they don't want to. Because, you know, you know when, when Mart was saying, well, I don't know why, I just haven't thought about it yet, I felt like saying, you know what, she hasn't met a good agent yet who has guided her through the process. That's why she hasn't moved yet, you know? So it's very interesting. So Yes, Phil. Uh, can we ask <coughs> questions about this process before everyone goes through it? Sure, yeah, absolutely. One of the things that sort of bothers me, and, and I won't say bothers me, but sure. I, I, I question a little bit, <laughs> is I'm asking somebody a question, yes. okay, how much attention do I pay to their response? I mean, you you responded to the question, I just posed to you. Now do I just go to the next question or do I say, oh, okay, yeah, that's, a, I mean, how you don't want to go off track with the response, but, you know. Very true. I like what you guys are already doing right now is uh, you're doing it beautifully. You're acknowledging it. You're saying, oh, okay, well, that's a nice area, you know. And you just want to respond briefly to it and then stay on track and move on to the next question. Now, it is possible that they bring something up about, you know, I want to live uh, closer to my grandchildren in Florida. I want to move to Florida, let's say, and my grandchildren are there, and my kids are there, and I, that, that's where I'd really like to go. And if you say to them, oh, well, that's, you know, Florida is great. What part of Florida? And you start getting into a conversation with them. You know, uh, for the sake of this role play in this room, I'm going to ask you not to do that. But when you get on the phone with somebody and you have an opportunity to build rapport, take that golden opportunity and take advantage of it and do it. And build rapport and get to know them better and have a regular old conversation about it as if they were an old friend. Uh, so that's an awesome question. Thank you for bringing it up. And that you should <coughs> delve into that. Now, the beautiful part about having these dialogues in front of you is what? You can stay on track. stay on track. So once you, because once you go off on a tangent, you need to get back on track at some point, right? And so that's the beauty of having these in front of you at all times. Don't try to memorize them. You can if you want to, but even if you do memorize them, keep them in front of you at all times. Okay. So Mark, who would you like to call? I'll do Roberta. All right, call Roberta. <coughs> Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, hello. So we don't need to identify and go off with the other thing. No, not all right. Yes. So, um, so where would you move to if you sold your house? Oh boy, um, I think that I might want to live on one floor at this point, on one level, looking toward the future. Oh, I see. That's a, the kind Getting of a house that you want to have. Yeah, I'm in a big colonial, I think, maybe. What about what area, though? It, does it matter, the area? Um, it does. I, I think I like the town that we live in, and I think I would stay in the town. Okay, so you prefer to stay in Pine Point. That's good. Yeah. It's a good area. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and why haven't you moved before now? Oh, I think it's because I've reached the point where the knees are starting to go and, um, you know, the physical symptoms are setting in. <laughs> yeah, so Before I that, I was perfectly happy in the in this colonial. <laughs> yes, oh, I understand. And there are some beautiful houses out there, so I'm sure we'll find something for you. So um, I'd like to stop by, maybe, and look at your house and uh, give you an idea of what price so that your house would bring or do you already uh, have you already figured that out <laughs> but no no I um, you know I have some idea from reading the paper and yes. going on uh, Craigslist and that sort of thing but mm -hmm. um, uh, that would be fine okay because I could give you a good uh, good analysis on that also if you wanted to have the net price the estimate of net 
we could do that too. Yeah. And that, that, would, that would give you exactly the amount that you would have in your hand, yeah. You mean like after commissions exactly. and Exactly, and your taxes, exactly. Bank and if you points. have a big mortgage left on your house, you know, we'll have to pay that mortgage first and then see what your net is. So we can do that. What, uh, um, what about also, did you think of doing some repairs in your house? I would look at it and tell you what are the things to do and not to do maybe. Well, I've thought about it. I could use a professional opinion. Yes, well, I could give you an idea of that. I think that could help. So what about if I went to visit you? Would 6 or 7 o'clock be good tonight? Um, sure, how's 7? 7 would be very good. All right, well, I'm looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> we'll yes. have a nice chat when I get there. All right, mm -hmm. she's got the appointment. Great. <coughs> Turn that prospect into an appointment. All right, Roberta, we'll call uh, Judy. I'll call Judy. Judy, Judy. right? Judy. Bring, bring. <coughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, I am just calling <coughs> Judy today to see if, um, well, you're beyond that. Sure. Um, yes. where <laughs> would, I'm just wondering if you did move, where, where about would you move if you sold your house? Um, I'd probably stay in town. You'd stay in town, okay, and and then you're looking for a different type of home. What what um, type of home would you be looking a, for? Probably a little fixer upper. A little fixer upper, mm -hmm. as opposed to your Something house, which is already done. We've already done everything. We like projects. Okay, so then you're looking to. What did you say? You said you wanted a, a fixer upper. Are you a looking for upper. an investment? No, to live in. To, to live in. We to enjoy stay working on it. Very good. Why is it that you haven't um, moved yet? And we're waiting for the market to get better. <laughs> and you just say, okay, and you just acknowledge it. And if, if you don't mind me interrupting, but this is a, this is a good one, but I, I love what she said. She says, I'm waiting for the market to get better. Well, now you, what I want you to do is I want you to resist the temptation of handling that as an objection now. Because your goal, the average agent will say, well, why do you want to wait for the market to get better? What if interest rates go up? Are you going to lose a lot of money if the interest rates go up? You should do it right now. You should do it now. You should really sell now. Have you considered selling now? And that's an average agent would, would, would lose it right then and there and try to convince her that to my way of thinking rather than her way of thinking and say, oh, okay, that's, I might even acknowledge it and say, oh, well, that's interesting. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are doing that right now, actually. And then I'd move to, remember, what's your goal? Your goal is to not sell her, what's your goal? To get, go an, there. get an appointment, go there, right? Yeah. And so then, Roberta being the pro that she is, moves in mm -hmm. with what? Well, Judy, I'd, li I'd like to stop by and take a look at your house. Um, and while I'm there, I would love to uh, I would love to give you um, a market analysis so that you can know how much money you will have so that you might know how much money you can spend on the other end. Um, so is it okay if I stop by tonight? Would six or seven be better? Six o'clock would be fine. Then I'll see you then. Okay. That's great. See how she paused when, when Roberta said, can I stop by tonight? Yeah. That was a yes or no. But Roberta quickly recovered and said, would, would six or seven be better? Use the alternate of choice and then see how it worked. It kicked in. Even in role playing, it worked. Now, Roberta also knows that she has an objection that she has to overcome when she gets there eventually. And that is the objection of waiting until the market picks up. Mm -hmm. And so Roberta's going to go there prepared with dialogues, facts, articles, information a historical chart of what the interest rates have been doing and where they're going to go, you know, so that she can explain to the to the consumer that this is, you know, you would mentioned on the phone mm -hmm. that you wanted to wait for the market to pick up. Let me give you some drawbacks to waiting. Remember last week I shared with you a whole list of drawbacks to waiting. Interest rates <laughs> might go up. And, uh, and if they do, you'll lose money. You might end up carrying two mortgages. You know, whatever, whichever one of those items apply to, the, to that individual person. So, Judy, you're going to call and I'm Jameson, by the way. Jameson, Jameson. thank you. I was going to ask you that. Can I yes. ask a question? Welcome. Thank when you. she said that, something yes. about what she said. When, when she said, um, 
I was going, I would like to go tonight. Let's say if the other lady interjects right away, she hasn't got time, but she's sure. hesitating before saying the six or seven, she'll say, uh, well, what about if I went tonight? And the go lady goes right away, oh, no, no, tonight's not good. Sure. So then you just jump to say, well, oh, is tomorrow fine. night okay? You just go what, on. What I would do is I keep using alternative choice, and I look at my schedule and say, okay, let me look at my schedule. Um, I'm available Thursday at 4, or would Saturday at 1 be good? I wouldn't say, is Saturday good? Because I don't ever want to give them a question where they can say no to. Yeah. Like if I say, is uh, Thursday at 1 o'clock or Saturday at 2 better for you? Okay. No. See, that doesn't work. It doesn't fit. They can't say no to that question. <laughs> they have to say, well, neither one of those times are good, or I may get to the point where I'm saying, well, when are you both home? And I'll, let me see what I, maybe I can rearrange my schedule. The last thing you want to do, of course, is tell them, especially if you're new and you're looking at your appointment book and it's completely wide open, you don't want to tell them, well, anytime, what are you available? Well, I'm available anytime. You know, that's not a good sign, right? <laughs> they, they, want to, they want to work with someone who's busy, you know, and uh, who's not available anytime. Yes? Marilyn, you just mentioned something, when are you both home, okay? How do you identify that there's both people? I mean, how do you know when you're talking, that, you know, yes. none of this dialogue has gotten to that point where, you know. The next class that we're going to be giving <laughs> is, uh, is, is literally uh, titled, uh, How to Set Up Higher Quality Listing Appointments. And if you go to your last page for a second, and when you go to this workshop next Friday, you're gonna get the answer to these questions. What should you take with you on the listing appointment? What is the best way to stay in control of the listing appointment? What is the difference between a listing in one stop or two stops? In other words, going to the house once or going to the house twice, okay? And what are the ingredients of a bona fide gettable listing appointment? And part of that is making sure that they're, that they're both home. And we're gonna discuss that in detail uh, next week when we get together next Friday. So uh, we will answer that question. And, and so your question again, Bill, was what? Well, how do you get to the point where you know that you, there's both of them? Ah, and I'm going to provide you with a list of questions next week to ask them <coughs> after you have the appointment. Okay. So today, we're taking, last week we, we, I taught you how to get the prospect. This week I'm focusing on how to turn that prospect into an appointment. Now that you've got the appointment, you can't hang up the phone yet. You have to ask some additional questions. And I'm going to provide you a list of those questions to ask so that you make sure that you're going on a gettable appointment, an appointment that's not going to waste your time. You you're follow like, me? You're like a friend of mine. He just gives you yeah. your pieces at a time. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the whole thing and let me out of here. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'd love to do that, but you know, uh, and, and I, I often say this to you too, like if, if you get, if you got on the phone today and you, and you got a lead and you got an appointment, you got a prospect, you say, John, I need next week's training session now, I'll give it to you. Come into my office and I'll, I'll, I'll give you everything you need. I don't want to keep you in suspense on purpose, uh, I'll give you everything you need when you need it. So, yeah, put uh, the guy in the hole. And say, yeah. just a minute, run to his Hold office. Hold on, I have to go to Get another back. seminar. I'll be right Get back. back. <laughs> oh, yeah, now I want to make sure you're going to be there, the two of you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's uh, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? You know, it's a process, you know. And quite honestly, what happens is when you get all this information all at once, without implementing a little bit at a time, it, it's not as effective. See, what I would love you to do, I would love you to make the calls and, and find the prospects last week and not know how to get the appointments and feel that what it's like to not get the appointment and feel that frustration and then go to this class and learn how to get the appointment you go oh yeah okay now i get it it's a lot more impactful when you do it wrong at first mm -hmm. a lot of training sessions they want you to do it wrong first uh, in fact if you ever have an opportunity to go to uh, uh the floyd whitman course otherwise known as star makers uh it used to be called sweat hogs years ago mm -hmm. Uh, what they do is they part of your assignment is, um, and by the way, if you ever get an opportunity to go to one of these courses, by all means, please do it. But what they'll do is they'll say, okay, I want you to go home and I want you to identify uh, for sale by owners and I want you to call them until you get an appointment. 
and they and and then they'll they'll have you come back the next week and say how did you do and everyone's like oh it was horrible people were hanging up on me people yelled at me said okay this week I'm gonna tell you what to say when you call them and they go well why didn't you give me that last week well you needed to feel the pain of what it was like to not have it to appreciate when you do have it and then you use it you see the effectiveness of it and see how it works you appreciate it more you use it more you learn it more it's ingrained into your brain more and you're more apt to use it. So that's why, you know, certain things work better if they're if they're given to you in pieces rather than all at once. Okay. So Judy is now going to call Jameson. Okay. Let me ask you this, where would you move if you did sell your house? I think I'd like to settle uh, in the community of Loverham. Okay, that's a nice community. Um, and what type of home would you be looking for? I'd like to downsize um, into a condominium. Okay. Okay, we can look at that. Um, why haven't you moved yet, may I ask? Um, I haven't found a buyer for my, uh, my, my house in, in another town. Okay. Are you presently working with anyone? Um, no, not as of yet. No. Okay. Um, well, I'd like to stop by and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, I could give you a um, market analysis of what your home would most likely sell for. Can I stop by at 6 o'clock tonight, or would 7 be better? 8 o'clock would be great, actually. 8 o'clock? That yeah. would be fine. I can work that in. Great phone to see you. Great, she has the appointment. Great job, both of you. Now, Jameson, why don't you call Linda? Yeah. Long distance. Yeah. Long distance, Long distance yeah. yeah. yeah Linda. Um, Linda, where would you uh, move if you sold? Um, I might move into Connecticut. Okay. Move that area. All right. Come uh, near me. What <laughs> type of home would you be looking for? I like a condo. That's okay. my next purchase. Okay. Um, why haven't you moved as of yet? Um, the market, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, ring, ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would like to stop by, take a look at your home, and while I'm there, I will give you some ideas about area competition. Um, that way you'll know better how to market your property um, in your neighborhood, and um, would it be okay if I stopped by this evening? Um, would six or seven o'clock be better? Seven would be fine. Okay, that'd be great. I'll see you at seven. Thank okay. you. James, great job. All of you give yourselves a hand for doing such a great job today. I don't know, some of you are seem that enthusiastic about <laughs> yourselves today. Usually it's like, oh well, yeah, all right. <laughs> It's a snowy day, I guess, right? You know what I know? It's a snowy day. The discretion that you, you gave us here, the dialogue, that it works with the buyers, too. Yes, absolutely. Exactly, you can say pretty much the same thing. Yes. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, Andre, you're so smart. No, <laughs> I just... Good. He's good. Now, um, if you notice, the first sessions that I covered are, are general sessions, which are the, four, the first four sessions that I covered here. Um, the secret of successful selling, how an agent can guarantee success, how to manage your time, how to stay motivated all year long. These were general sessions. These sessions here that I'm, I'm moving into uh, last week and this week, uh, how to find listing prospects, how to turn prospects into appointments. Uh, next week, how to set up higher quality listing appointments. These are all going, these sessions that I'm heading into now are going to be on listings. See, the first part is you have to have the right mental attitude first and be able to manage your time first in order to do anything in, in, in any business. And so that's why I focused the first four sessions on those general aspects. In real estate, you have to list it to last. And in order for you to get even buyers, you need to have listings in most cases. So, or you need to use other people's listings in order for you to attract buyers to you. So people say, well, I like working with buyers. I say, great, how are you going to get buyers? <laughs> you need to get listings in order to attract buyers. So the second step that I'm focusing on is on the listing end of the business. And then I will focus on um, the buyers, how to work with buyers, because working with buyers now is not as important unless you get the listings first. And then after that, we're going to focus on some, uh, some general objections, uh, objection handling techniques, like how to handle um, I want to think it over. When a buyer or a seller says, you know, that's great, I, I just want to go and I want to think it over. How do you handle that? How do you handle, um, I have a whole session dedicated to, how do you handle the commission objection? You know, that's a great presentation. I love you, I love your company, but <laughs> I don't want to pay you. 
six percent. That seems like a lot of money. I, I can get someone to do it for four. Oh, I'm worth every penny. There you go. <laughs> Mark, Mark's going to teach that class. <laughs> that's great. So th that's where I'm going with these with these sessions. And um, for those of you who have just started these, or if you've missed the prior session, by all means, I would encourage you to get and get on these uh, videos and, and start watching them. I think it's a huge advantage that you have them in your offices and that uh, you can take advantage of them on, uh, on DVD. You can kind of catch up. You can do it anytime you're available to come into the office. Uh, there, are, there are handouts similar to the one that you have here today that will accompany each one of these videos. Um, and so I would say, you know, take advantage of them and, and use them. Uh, any questions? No? If you, yes? Uh, this is a little bit off the track of what we just discussed, but it was something that you just hit on now as far as, you know, having listings and that attracting buyers. Mm -hmm. uh, and people who are just starting out that may not have a lot of listings. You know, you see someone who's an established agent and they'll be their picture and they'll be, you know, 10 of the listings they have on the metro section or something mm -hmm. like that. Yes. Would it be... Um, dishonest, unethical, uh, inappropriate, any one of those words, if you took your ad out and said uh, something like uh, East Long Metal Listings, and you actually had listings, and you're not saying they're your listings, these are listings that may be in your office or may just be listings on that market. Yeah. Uh, is that an inappropriate thing to do? No, not at all. Here's what you have to do in order to do that. And I've actually asked people to do this, and very few <coughs> people have taken advantage of it. If you went to uh, Brenda Flower uh, and uh, or Rebecca uh, or you know Roberta and mm -hmm. and Mark, and you went to a few people in the office and said and said, "Listen, here's what I want to do." Now, some people will say yes, and some people will say no. Okay, it depends on what where they're at, okay? But let's say you came to me and I, I was a listing agent and I had a lot of listings. And you said to me, John, um, I'm in the process of really trying to build my business and I know in order to do that I need to get listings. And sometimes listings beget listings. And I want buyers and I need listings. And so what I want to do is I want to create a presence out there in the public. And so what I would like to do is, with your permission, John, I would like to uh, advertise your listing on 123 Pine Street I'll put the price in and all that good stuff. I'm going to pay for the ad. The phone will ring to my cell phone. And heck, you know, if I get a call, I might end up selling your listing. And you could uh, actually have an opportunity to show your seller that their property is being advertised uh, an additional, in, an, in an additional spot. So with your permission, I'd like to advertise your listing. Can I do that? And I'd first think about it, and I'd say, well, that's kind of weird. No one's ever asked me that before. Um, I guess there's no harm in it. Um, I don't have to pay for it, right? No, you're going to pay for it, right? And I could say to my seller, hey, look, our, your property is being advertised um, in, in the paper. You know, uh, one of our agents in our office <coughs> is putting it in one of his ads. And um, yeah, I'm okay with that. I have a pretty, I'm pretty secure. And, you know, I feel comfortable with that's That's all right. Yeah, sure. You know, um, go, go right ahead. Um, some people will say, yeah, you know what, maybe not this one or maybe next week or whatever. And they, they just, if they're going to advertise it, they want them to be the one to advertise it and so on and so forth. And, and that's okay too, but certainly worth asking. It's kind of like saying, you know, uh, Roberta, I'm, I'm new to real estate and I know I, you've, you've got a new listing that, you know, we just previewed last week and uh, I love that, that ranch, you know, what, what street was it on the ranch that we looked at yesterday? Bel Air. Bel Air. And, um, you know, I think that that would be a good turn for open houses. Would it be okay if I did an open house on your listing? And Roberta might say, actually, no, I'm going to do an open house this weekend on that listing, and it is a great place to have an open house. Or she may say, you know what, I'm doing an open house on another street, on Pine Street, and so, sure, that would be great. Now she could have an open house on two of her listings on the same day, and she only has to be in one place. So it's kind of the same thing, you know, where you're using other people's listings to kind of launch your career. And the benefit to the listing agent, of course, is that they're getting some service on their listings. Um, so in, in essence, it's very, there's very little difference. And it's perfectly fine as long as you have permission of the people within your office and it's with your company. Um, you, 
you certainly, you, you cannot do it with another company. Uh, even if they give you permission, you couldn't do it with another company. Raven, uh, so you couldn't say, um, um, I'm an East Long Meadow specialist and I can show you in, and have a list of houses like in East Long Meadow that are for sale and then underneath say, um, uh, multiply, multiple listed properties. I can nope. show you any of these multiply li multiple listed properties. <coughs> Illegal? <No. coughs> yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Um, right, you can't do that. But you can have a website that advertises all of the, all of the properties from everywhere and on the bottom, like if you go on our website and you do a search, you'll see listings from Remax and Call Banker and ABC and XYZ Real Estate Company um, on our website, but you're on our website. But on the bottom, it'll say, you know, in very fine print, who the listing company is and who the listing agent is on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of websites are like that. Any, any of our competitors do the same thing. You can find our listings on our competitors' websites. Um, they call them IDX websites. Now, let's say he was doing, you said yes, that he could have, let's say he takes four houses, one is yours, da, da, da. Sure. Uh, your name going to be under it and her name under it, or no names at all? Well, it could. It's up to Bill, but if he's paying for the ad, yeah, I'm he sure he's going to want to get the call. He not his name, no. Well, I don't think he really yeah. cares about the name as much as he gets the phone call. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think he'd want the name there. I don't think, personally... I've ever gotten a phone call from the Metro ads, but I can't tell you how many I've gotten from Craigslist. Ah, okay. Personally. Sure. Personally. Yeah. So if you got uh, permission from someone to put it on Craigslist <coughs> with your name and number on it, yeah. but it is, it is someone else's listing. You know? Yeah. Uh, just get permission from that person to do that. And we have 46 listings in our office right now, so <laughs> you can go out of our office. Maybe you can go to a... a if you want to pick on a particular area and there's somebody in the Wilbraham or Chicopee office, you can do that as well. You know, so you know, it's worth a shot. The open houses, I think, is a good idea because then yes. your name is there sure. and everything else. Yeah. And then you're there. Yeah. And, and you the know people what? People welcome it now, and we yeah. can't do them all. So. True. Very true. And you know, what, what we've talked about just now is completely off the wall, like nobody's doing it, no one's done it, but there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, by all means, it, it can be done. Yes, it can be done. Any other questions? No? Okay, guys, if you do, give me a call, uh, and uh, I'll be glad to help you in any way I can. And uh, next week, remember how to set up higher quality listing appointments. We're going to go over those bullet items that I mentioned before. And uh, if you would, leave your clipboards on your chairs. They are the property of this room. <laughs> Some people uh, end up walking away with them. I want to ask a question. When we ask them, um, I'll give you a market analysis and I'll do this and that, is it better to say at a certain time, after you've said I and I, to say, and then we will come to a conclusion and then we can do this and we can do that, to bring the we in, or is that bad? No, it's not, it's not good or bad. I would just try to keep the conversation extremely short. Just you could definitely yeah. use we. Uh, you could use we, like for instance. I did use we when I was talking yeah. to Roberta. Absolutely. I'd like to stop by and take a look at your house, and while I'm there, uh, we can arrive at a, I, we. Yeah, that's what I know, mean. We can, can we say that? You could say we, yeah. Uh, okay. You know, we could go over some details of, of how to prepare your home for exactly. sale. Absolutely. To make them feel as yes. if they're partaking in it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. I think but you're still the boss. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We know you're the boss. Yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. No doubt about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So drive safe, gang. I know this. We're supposed to get some more snow uh, today. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, more right. snow. So. Well, you thanks for good, coming you out. You were the good one to come. We live all nearby. Yeah. I don't mind getting uh, that four-wheel drive vehicle. So we congratulate you yeah, coming. Thank you. Well, thank you're you. very welcome. I'm glad, I'm glad you were here, we're too. We're going to give you a certificate at the next meeting. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's great. You showed up at all your meetings. Right. And uh, Mark and Jameson, you have to uh, print your names on here so I can oh, provide okay. you with a certificate. Oh, yeah. uh, you can turn me off now.